What's up guys, we're all familiar with GPS modules and ever since Betaflight came up with GPS Rescue we've been using these on our drones. Today I'm going to test out iNav. iNav is something I've always wanted to try and what I've done, I've built a little tiny drone here. This is a 1S drone that's running iNav and everything on this works so nicely it even surprised me. So I want to kind of show my experience. I'm not going to go through the whole full setup of iNav because that's that's a whole thing. It takes a lot. iNav is actually quite complicated to set up. It's easy once you know it but compared to Betaflight there's a lot more things that you have to go through. And I'd love to make a comparison between the return to home on iNav and the return to home on Betaflight. Now this drone is running the latest Betaflight. I think it's 4 or 5. Uh, it's still not completely out yet, but it's close. It's a release candidate. And I was actually really surprised how good Betaflight GPS Rescue had become. I mean, the last time I used it, it was very janky. It was weird. But when I tried GPS Rescue recently, I was really surprised at how far they have come. And I feel so much more confident with Betaflight. However, with iNav, you do get a few perks. And I think Betaflight might bring these features, which is position hold. So iNav position hold basically makes your drone feel like a DJI drone. And that's kind of cool. And it, it, it gives you some peace of mind. Like if you're flying and you want to scratch your head or something happens, you know, usually when you're flying FPV, you're in your goggles and you're so focused and it's a little bit stressful. So just to be able to park your drone in the sky is actually quite cool. So basically the only way that Betaflight knows where north is you have to keep flying around and it sees okay you're going forward and you ended up over here so that must mean that north is in this direction and you know it does some whole bunch of calculations as you fly so basically when you take off the drone is basically blind as to which direction it's going until you start moving around a lot and the more you move is the more it knows which direction is home and the problem with that is that if there's wind that direction to home kind of becomes a little bit off because then the drone thinks it should be going this way and ends up over there. Very complicated how it how it's trying to figure that out. But basically, it's not that accurate. That's why when you hit return to home, sometimes it's like wobbling around and trying to figure out where am I, where am I, you know. It works, but, you know, it's a little bit wonky. But that's why iNav uh, is a lot better when it comes to that. And since iNav can take advantage of more than just the GPS unit, you can add all these sensors. I built this guy that actually has this Matek Optical Flow LiDAR sensor. It's a very cheap sensor. It's not that good but it works it got the job done what this is it's basically a camera that faces downward it looks at the terrain so if you're indoors and you don't have gps signal or you just don't have a gps at all you can still have position hold inside which is actually a cool feature and it also has a i think it's a lidar sensor which basically is a laser that points down then it knows the distance to the ground so it also helps it to to, to keep its uh, uh distance from the ground it hovers basically much better than using the barometer so yeah, I think it's really cool that I was able to do this using just a 1S battery. You know, I just wanted it to be as simple as possible. And I didn't expect it to work as good as it did. It's not perfect. It still wobbles around a bit. I think that either I need to set the uh, their settings in there for PID to adjust the uh, um, how good the position hold works. Ideally, it would be nice for it to just sit there steady. But, you know, the fact that it stays any at all is kind of really cool. I just left it default and this works. Look at this. This is amazing. I can leave this hovering in the house. It's just really cool. There are so many things I can think that this would be good for. I'm going to head out and test these two guys out and here are the results. All right, I know. This time we got the turn to home set properly. Let's go. Okay, let's make sure we can hover. Okay. Hover is working. Anyway, let's do return to home. Here we go. Okay. Little bit of a weird. I don't know what that was, wobble or whatever. And so uh, he's over my head somewhere. Let's see. He's gonna land on me. Here we come. Coming down slowly, I think. What the hell is going on? He stopped. I don't know if that's the optical flow trying to like figure out what the ground is. He's really slow. Burnt out an EFC there, but that's 
Return to home, I now start. So let's see if we can get it better this time. And there we are. Here we are. So here we go, return to home, boom. Kind of does a weird little thing, I don't know. So it says move sticks to. Okay, he's coming back. So like he's a little bit. He's not going to go see it, and he turns around, which is cool. Please don't run to my monitor or anything. And then he sits there. He literally sits there for a while. Very slowly. soft landing I really like that okay so we got eight satellites I think it will work actually I've never tried return to home on this drone and hopefully it doesn't end up like our first test so what happens as we're flying beta flight is trying to figure out which way we are because it's looking at the direction that I'm traveling so what I like to do is fly around a bit go a little bit all the way over here so it's always a good idea to make sure that your arrow is pointing home and it kind of isn't so let's fly on a bit more just for it to understand where home is uh, and now I think it's doing a good job so come on hundreds so now I'm gonna do return to home here we go Going up a bit, and he's turning around. Okay, okay, he's hobbling, he's wobbling. All right, okay, okay, I see myself down there. He's really trying. Oh my god, oh my god, what is happening? What is happening? Oh. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. I think maybe I didn't set my hover throttle. That could be the case. I don't know if I want to try that again. And maybe now since I have nine sets it might be a little better. Let's try that again. Okay. Let's try it here. Here we go. He's hovering nicely right there. And then he turns around slowly. Seems like it's hovering nicely. It looks like it's doing better now, to be honest. Okay, it's coming back. I'm afraid. He's out there. He's coming down. A bit fast. Please slow down. Okay. Alright. <laughs> That's not bad. I mean, came back home, we kind of fell. Kind of fell. Bit fast. Maybe there's an adjustment for that, but you know, there he is. Okay, so that was interesting, but one thing I want to say, I know I didn't give beta flight a fair enough advantage here because I basically did not have a barometer inside of the beta flight quad. It was basically just using the GPS, which kind of makes me love beta flight more because it's doing so much with so little also one thing to take note of is it's very good if you can get more satellites it really makes a difference if you have more satellites if you've noticed i really barely had any satellites i was so eager to fly and do this test that as soon as i got enough i was off but really and truly i've done way more tests than i showed you here and i found each time that if you have more satellites your return to home both on beta flight and inav is way smoother so yes, if you can get more satellites on your drone, you're going to have a much smoother experience of return to home. As you saw on the beta flight quad the second time I did it, I actually lowered my VTX so that, that the, uh, it allowed more satellites to be locked and it was way more stable. As much as the beta flight drone fell so heavily out of the sky, you know, it brings your drone home and it lands it and that's really what it's there for. So INAV is more made for big heavy rigs that need to land slowly and you want to make sure that everything is safe. 
So INAV makes you feel a lot safer, which is what it's really for. INAV really just delivered what it was supposed to do, and that's kind of what I expected. And I was actually more surprised at the fact that I could fly INAV like a regular drone. So INAV, yes, it's good for GPS, but it's also good for that's just freestyling. It actually feels pretty good. It doesn't have the advanced filtering that Betaflight might have, but it has enough for you to fly and feel like you don't really miss Betaflight. This is not a complete comparison to say one is better than the other. There is pros and cons to everything. I just wanted to try it out. Sometimes you get bored with just doing one thing and you want to try something else. And maybe you want to do this. And this might help you to, to you know, make a decision if you want to play around with, with uh, some advanced GPS stuff. If you want to do missions and all that stuff. INAV is the way to go. Okay, guys, there you have it. I hope you learned something really cool from this. I know I have. I just wanted to share my knowledge. Let me know what your experience with INAV has been, if any at all, or your experience with Return to Home. And yeah, let me know your ideas. What would be a cool thing to build with these uh, sensors that we can use on INAV? All right, guys, happy flying and see you soon.